Hi everyone, Roy here on my channel, Roy Reads Anything, and going to talk about a game I'm intending to play with myself, which is to try and guess the story of a book that I haven't read yet from the covers. So the idea is uh, look at a bunch of covers for the same book and use the clues to anticipate what the story might contain then read the book and see what actually happens. Mm. Make sense? Makes sense to me. So this the book in question, Rogue Herries by Hugh Walpole. Uh, now I know the author pretty well, read quite a few of his books, uh, but not this one, even though it's part of his well-known series. So it's, uh, you know, I've got a bit of a sense of things that might be in it, but not the specifics. So this is a copy I picked up in a supermarket charity shelf, along with some of the others that I mentioned in a haul video. So this is the subject. And I mean, one thing I'd say is this game probably works better with older books because today's kind of semi-abstract you know, you just might get a symbol or some typography or maybe a sort of stock photo of a human being in a landscape. It doesn't doesn't necessarily give you a great deal of stuff to go on. Whereas in the olden days, more illustrative covers were were more common. So this one has actually a photographic cover that wraps around the back and what we see is a stone bridge, a type of bridge called a pack horse bridge. And together with the hills suggests that this is in the Lake District of England. And there's a human figure on the bridge, a little figure of a man. And he's got one knee up on the bridge and one hand on the knee. OK, so it's kind of a, a masterful pose gazing out over the landscape. No, well, he, he seems to be doing it quite a long time. Um, so, OK, Lake District with a masterful fellow. Already I'm learning something. Now, I've, I've seen, this, seen this title before and heard it mentioned in famous Monty Python sketch. I assumed there's a family called the Herries and some of them are the rogue Herries, like a breakaway faction. But I'm beginning to think Rogue is either a old old timey given name or perhaps nickname of, of like one guy, the hand on the guy. Masterful so guy. that's that. And in fact, yes, if you look at the oldest copies, like what was on the first edition, and also what's on a current paperback, you see a single man, legs straddled. So he's making a wide man-spreading pose and hands behind back holding a riding crop. So <laughs> that seems also to, to reinforce the kind of rogue Herries is a chap and he has a forceful personality, let us say. OK, so looking at some others I've got. So uh, also from Pan Books, actually older an edition of Rogue Herries. Unfortunately, some rogue has um, filled in the letters with some with a biro. But here we see man, hands on hip, standing, standing up straight and looking, uh, looking at a woman. So the woman's in the front, the woman's looking at us. He's behind her looking at her. Still kind of like I own everything, but now you've got this got this other character, so what's going on? Because I think she's probably going to be important. We see her again, for instance, on this edition, which is like the whole series of four in one massive volume that came out in the 1940s, I think, uh, printed on like Bible thin paper because they're quite long books. So here, man, legs, legs straddling wide. He's actually wearing leather boots that seem to go halfway up his thighs. So, OK, good. Um, one hand on hip, one hand kind of, he's doing something with his face. He's got finger. 
this crooked finger on this? face. No, he's not going. <laughs> he's not. He's not going like that. He's going like this. Now. Could this be like some sort of tell, you know, some sort of physical habit that this guy has? Or is it just the artist's idea of this is what you do with your face when you're pondering the back of a woman's head? Because yeah. that's what's happening. Again, it's woman in front looking at us. He's behind. Possibly I'm sh another idea I'm shelving is he takes some kind of vow never to never to behold her from the front. He's only going to look at the back of her head. Um, another thing about this is he's got this waistcoat, this rather splendid waistcoat, embroidered waistcoat. Now, I know I've got form from, like, dressing up to go with the reading. And I thought for about a minute about, oh, I could get an embroidered waistcoat. I think the thing is, on this chap in what looks like about 17th century, it looks quite aristocratic and splendid. I think on me, I would look like a hobbit going to a party. <laughs> so, not the worst for that, not, sir. Well, yeah, that yeah. might be a good look in its own right. Yeah. Um, anyway, yes, I'm expecting this woman. There's something about this where, you know, is he meant to be with this woman or is this some kind of illicit crossing the barriers of class kind of thing? Although... This could be um, a much more familiar story, Poldark, Winston Graham's novels that were adapted into television series twice, where he marries a, um, or a sort of, he does marry, he marries Esmeralda, doesn't he? No, Demelza. Demelza, Demelza. Yeah. And she's, yeah. Uh, well, she's dirt poor. Yeah, yeah. And her family are Methodists. So whether, whether I'm Definitely just kind of um, getting confused there. Anyway, yes. So that's, uh, that's there's this, he's, okay, he's the guy who commands the landscape and looks at the back of a woman's head. <laughs> but what's going on here? Presumably this is the same guy. He seems to be doing some kind of crazy little dance with his arms up like this. Um, <laughs> coat tail flying, arms like this, it looks like a TikTok dance challenge. Um, the red-headed woman is behind him now, and his hair's gone white. Um, looking at the... again, there seems to be a fallen man on the back, so it could be this is some kind of fight. So perhaps he's got some kind of Lake District martial art style of style of fighting and that's that's how it looks so we'll look out for Cum cumbria foo <laughs> um okay of course there are like i said it's part of a series so perhaps the later books give us some clues as well so going back to pan and their photos they went back to the same bridge for Judith Paris, a lot closer up with uh, a woman, probably Judith Paris, sitting draped on the bridge. And um, in both pictures, you can see a suspiciously modern looking sign, this being before the days of Photoshop. Um, the fortress. Now, man and woman, he's still behind her, still following the family tradition of only looking at the head backs. And he's also got his hat, he's sitting down, but he's got his hand on his knee. Maybe they're born with their hands like welded to their knees, but um, <laughs> hand on knee still seems to be a thing, gazing out over the landscape. So definitely Lake District, judging by the lake. Um, then finally you get Vanessa. Vanessa illustrated with a picture of a man, presumably not Vanessa. Um, where's his hand? On his knee. What's he looking at? The landscape. Though he seems to have sunk down a bit, so it's like from standing up, they're now slumped. Relaxed. Yeah, relaxed yeah, looking out. Yeah, maybe they're just maybe they're just tired. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's some clues there as to how this sort of thing might pan out. Um, of course, these aren't these British editions aren't the only ones. So if I look at my computer I can see 
there's an American edition which brings in a kind of piratical look. Could this be the same man holding a cutlass with one of those big flary shirts uh, with now a blonde woman clank clinging onto his neck? Oh, Ships. He's in front of, yeah, in front of a mosaic. Roman time travel. So there's <laughs> all sorts of things could be happening there. Um, Spanish edition. That goes into a completely different direction. Now, the Spanish edition is called Il Ribaldo. <laughs> so, rogue, they've just translated rogue, scoundrel, as, as the name, as part of La Famiglia Heri's romanzo. Uh, so here now, the man, presumably Mr Heri's, is riding a horse with a small figure sitting in front of him. Now... With it being in front, I thought this must be that woman again. <laughs> again, he's you still may, may able to look at her head from the back only, but um, I think it might be a child actually. Hence the disparity of sizes, because I did think also like bloody hell, she's she, if he's assuming he's like six feet, she must be about four feet high. Uh, so maybe he's a family man. Certainly, as far as the Spanish are concerned, he likes to wear. The trousers of Rupert Bear. <laughs> a particular style of trousering. Uh, there's a French edition too. Rogue Herries. Herries, where we see him with white hair. So I'm kind of guessing this goes through somebody's whole life until he gets quite old. Uh, still rocking an in embroidered waistcoat. But whatever he's looking at in front... Behind him, we're seeing a ghostly horse, like a white stallion rearing up in front of a mountain. So what's going on there, I don't know. Whether it's like the end of his life and he's looking back and thinking, well, everything that happened with that red-haired woman, who's, uh, you know, whose head back I saw so much of, it's the horse I really miss. Or something happens or somebody get, ends up being embodied in a ghostly horse and the ghostly horse comes back to haunt them. We will have to see. Um, now, let's say... Say you're mad and have several copies of the same <laughs> book. Um, although it is one book, because books are kind of living things... What we see over time, you know, they were different anyway because of the vagaries of registration of printing plates, but now differential fading has made, brought these changes about as well, which makes it look like they actually are slightly different covers or it's sort of the same scene, but it, going through time a little bit. So it starts off, the day starts off dark and gloomy, gets a bit lighter, gets a bit lighter. It's brightening up quite a lot. All the time, the guy's standing there on the bridge. Um, but then, oh my God, sheets of lightning coming down, striking the landscape. The sky has gone orange. And if you look closely at the sheets of lightning, you see the face of a ghostly horse emerging. <laughs> so... I thought after all that I had the whole Harry saga, but it turned out Hugh Walpole slipped in a couple more. So he wrote a prequel, The Bright Pavilions, uh, which not an illustrative cover here, although he's got a sort of HW logo that the publishers are putting on the spines. So he's the kind of author where you've got to catch them all, sort of publishing like whole sets of his work in, in library form was a thing that publishers would do because he was very popular. So he's, he was writing between 1909, 1941, when he died, was very popular as a pre-war writer. Um, I mean, I'll come when I've actually read the book and some others, I'll come back to talking about them. Um, I would say very briefly, he's a writer who takes some of the best things about 19th century novels, that sort of style of writing, and brings it into 20th century popular fiction, often with a slightly gothic element. Um, so anyway, yes, so Mr H.W. 
and you can see here a back cover for one of his books where they're sort of giving you the full lists and how they sort of fall into series or groups and a picture as well of the fellow so his face is his, his fortune um, this kind of headmasterly looking face you do see reproduced quite a lot on his books um, it's funny he he sadly he died quite young he was 57 now I'm older than I'm older than that now and yet I feel however old I get I will never be quite as old as as the person in this picture he'll always be one step ahead there was even another one Catherine Christian unfinished prequel novel so again it's a sign of his popularity at the time that people would buy you know a bit like Tolkien with his unstarted tales volume 8 sort of thing people would buy an unfinished book because they want to uh, they're sort of Walpole completists so covers yes I've got some ideas of things that may or possibly may not happen within the books but interested to see who's the woman with the red hair what's rogue harry's like did was, is the poldark story taken from this idea you know this there seems to be the the fight with the so much to look forward to not to mention a ghostly horse um and a possible episode when he goes off and becomes a pirate for a while <laughs> in roman times um, so the reading's actually going to happen in July, so uh, I thought I'd, um, there might be a couple of buddy readers along for the ride. So not exactly an event, simply a, uh, a time-bound occurrence where some of us will read a bunch of Hugh Walpole and try and, uh, try and rehabilitate the, um, uh, well, an excellent writer. Like I said, I've never read one I didn't like. Never got round to his most famous ones. Got all these lovely editions. If you're short of a copy of Rogue Harry's, just come to me. I'll sort you out. OK, that is all I've got to say on that subject. I'll see you again soon. With something else. <laughs>